Well, baby, I'm on it with a bottle of wine and an old road. Are you ready to go? On Live Music Nation podcast, I'm your host, Jake Gill. We are with Scott Thomas from the Buzz Entertainment Agency. Scott, give us a little background of what you guys do. We specialize in casino entertainment is our, our main forte. We uh, book casinos all over the country, everything from celebrity appearances to uh, national acts to game shows. So a little bit of everything, but we specialize in casino entertainment. And I, I can't imagine anyone got hit harder than you during the pandemic. I'll tell you what, it was, it was brutal living out the government there for a year. You know, I mean, all our shows are shut down and, and a lot of the casinos, almost 90% of our casinos are totally shut down, shut down. Yeah, yeah. What were some things that you learned during the pandemic that you're going to implement and continue to, to uh, manifest um, as we go through the post-pandemic phases? You know, we've kind of realized that uh, people are creatures of habits. You know, we did shows with the, uh, the the pods and people just knew exactly where to go to. They went to their pods. Nobody had a problem with those pods. Uh, people know, you know, the social distancing. Uh, we've noticed that some of these uh, these people are starting to slowly come back. And some are kind of, you know, kind of like that social distancing, you know, where we had the pods that they were actually right up front with nobody next to them. So it wasn't like a big mosh pit. Explain the pod system to me. I've seen it, but a lot of listeners haven't. Well, what we end up doing for a lot of the shows, we end up doing uh, pods where they were uh, like a uh, eight by eight square, literally taped on the concert floor. And four people would go stand in that pod or if it was a, a seated show, we'd put four chairs in that little square. And then we'd have like a, a little break between the next pod and have four chairs there, move over another four chairs and just a little taped off. And some of the times we just did four little construction flags in, a cor in each corner. So it was, you know, interesting, but it worked. Yeah, very good. Very good. How did your staff handle the pandemic? Um, you know, so so, you know, we ever, you know, there's four of us in the office. We, you know, all were laid off there for a while and we got a little PPP money. So that helped out for a little bit. And then uh, we start, you know, once things opened up, we're doing some of the first shows in the entire country, which was nice. And, you know, everything from com we started off doing comedy again. So that way we could social distance with comedy, you know, two seats here and it was all seated. So it wasn't general admission shows so that really helped getting sure. back into the flow again. Very good. Very good. So you were able to maintain your full staff. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Good. Very good. Very good. What percent do you think you're, we're back in, in, in your level of booking compared to before? Where, where are you at? You know, I'd say we're probably back 80 percent right now. Uh, you know, we had a couple of shows just two weeks ago with uh, Casey Donahue. He ended up getting COVID and he canceled himself. So we're seeing not just the shows, but we're seeing some of the artists now. I mean, I know uh, last night in Las Vegas, Justin Bieber got COVID and canceled, the, you know, last night in tonight's show. So we're seeing the artists actually starting to have a little COVID problem too. But the audience wise seems to be kind of flushed through. Very good. Very good. How long have you been in the business, Scott? Uh, you know, I'm a radio guy. So I've been in uh, radio for, you know, 25 years and went from radio into promotions. And I was uh, booking concerts for the radio stations. Then I got into, you know, booking casinos and theaters. So about 25 years. Very good. Very good. What's the top three acts you've seen your entire life? Uh, you know, uh, I'm a, well, I'm biased. Uh, I'm a huge Cheap Trick fan. All right. All right. I've seen Cheap Trick 74 times in uh, seven different states and like 30 different cities. So I'm a big Cheap wow. Trick fan and I'm friends with, you know, the guys from Cheap Trick and their kids and all the guys at sure. Cheap Trick. Uh, big fan of Kiss over the years, seeing Kiss okay. numerous times, you know, their great stage show and one, you know, I've done a lot of shows with uh, Blake Shelton. We just did uh, a big show with Blake at our casino at, over Christmas. And uh, I've always, you know, I really like how Blake's career has taken off. And the show we had with Blake just two months ago was incredible. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Dream act to book for, dead or alive, who would you have liked to have booked for? You know, I, I, we do it. It's funny. We do a ton of Elvis uh, contest all over the country. It's called the King Contest. So I think maybe always be one be one up on the list because I'm always amazed that we do these Elvis contests all over the country. And we bring in you know some of the top Elvis impersonators, Elvis all over the country, and they compete for like ten thousand dollars in prize money. These guys at the end of the show will sell a CD of themselves for twenty five dollars singing Elvis songs. And I'm thinking to myself, you can go to Walmart and buy Elvis's number ones for nine dollars, <laughs> the original. And these guys are selling themselves being Elvis for twenty five dollars. So I give them big props on that. Yeah, for sure, very sure, very good. Over your twenty five year span, you've seen a lot of artists. You've seen um, a lot of people grow up. You mentioned Blake Shelton, and that's as you go through there. When you're looking at taking an artist on the roster, what are some things that you look for? 
Uh, you know, we look for consistency that, you know, they, it's not just a fly by night thing that they're, you know, they're passionate. Uh, there's this little rock group that we've been uh, working with called Ninth Planet Out. We're trying to, you know, get them in the intimate steps and kind of take them through and get them onto a tour and a few other things. But these guys just, they have the passion and, you know, they, they don't have, they have a few day jobs that are easy to move around. So, you know, stuff like that, but they're just so passionate. And those are the things that we really love. Very good. Very good. If you were talking to the young Scott, 10, 11, 12 year old who wanted to get in the music industry, what's a good way to get started? You know, I actually went to uh, radio and television broadcast school, so I have a degree in broadcasting. So that's how kind of how I got started. But any type of internships, you know, I was in. I don't know if you're ever familiar with things. Used to be called the Explorer Scouts. Uh -huh. So and you know, so I used to uh, hang out at the radio station, had a little weekend radio show when I was you know 16 in in high school. I went on to radio and television broadcasting. Uh, I brought my son up. He you know he started in the business when he was young and works for me and. He was around it since day one. I mean, there's there's a time I remember when I was in Fort Wayne, working in Fort Wayne, we got a Rod Stewart con, con, uh, concert, is, I don't know, 25 years ago probably. Right. He was playing soccer with Rod before the show. Oh, wow. Very so he's cool. been around it since day one. He's done everything from selling T-shirts to spotlights. So I think just trying to get yourself in the door and just making yourself accessible to, you know, it, it, avoid that it's not my job person, you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. What is a trend that you see um, catching on right now that you think will continue to the future for artists? You know, I, I've been seeing a lot of the, you know, Zoom stuff, the uh, web concerts. There's that, uh, you know, the Stage Me show where, you, you know, people have been doing a lot of stuff. I'm good friends with the Brett Michaels guys. A lot of those guys have been doing stage it's where they, you know, grab their guitar in, a, in their living room and play out. And you buy a virtual ticket. And that seems, I think that'll stay around. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, what do you think has been the greatest thing that we will learn from the pandemic coming out of it as, as an industry as whole? You know, I'm not really sure. I, you know, I think that it's uh, things got to be, you have to adapt to any situation. So, I mean, yeah. two and a half years ago, not in a million years, would you think the entire industry would be shut down? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we, like people had adapted to it, you know, with the, the social distancing, you know, mask at concerts or if it's vaccination cards or, I mean, everybody had their little, little, you know, give and take, but I think you just have to adapt. Yeah, I love that adaptability. That's perfect. That's yeah. Perfect. Very good. Scott, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate the insight. I appreciate what you do for the music industry. And um, I'm just, just, just grateful that you're here and, and you're doing your job and you're doing a good job at that very much. So we appreciate what you do for the industry and, and grateful to have you on the podcast. I would love to do it again, Jake. All right. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye. Well, baby, I'm on it with a bottle.